You are listening to Despair by Michael Brockbank. Episode 9. There were four of them, all slowly marching forward like some macabre group of mindless warriors. But that's what made them such easier prey. Most animated corpses don't have the most keen intellect or battle strategy. For them, there is no honor or the euphoric feeling that follows after a victory. However, they also don't value self-preservation or feel pain. This means they can throw themselves into the fray without care or worry while striking even if most of their limbs have been removed. Jordan knew he had to strike, but to do so as to not cause a ruckus. After all, he didn't want the skeleton within the manor to be made aware of his presence just yet. Without knowing who or what was controlling it, stealth was more ideal in this situation. If he had more time, Jordan would lead the pack further away from the manor. The storm would help muffle the upcoming fight as long as the hunter could dispatch the quartet quickly. With a sense of balance and grace, Jordan's swings with his axes followed a near-perfect rhythmic pattern. Each slice found its mark, severing limbs and heads from all four of the walking dead. One by one, they each fell under the skill of the hunter. Within a matter of less than ten strokes, the approaching party had been reduced to a heap of severed limbs and torsos. He knelt by the pile of corpses to ensure they would not rise again by carefully observing for even the slightest of movement. Now stay down, he whispered, wiping remnants of flesh from the blades of his weapons. He looked up at the windows of the manor for signs that whoever was inside heard the fight. Waiting patiently still and crouched over the bodies, Jordan held his axe ready to throw should anyone peer from the broken window nearest his location. The light from the lantern reflected off the ceiling from where Jordan could see, but the intensity dimmed. The skeleton was apparently walking away from the window, possibly continuing on its trek between the kitchen and the common room. With how quickly he executed the dead, the hunter thought it were doubtful his prey had observed or overheard the battle. Stepping over the bodies, Jordan peered into one of the windows that miraculously remained intact with but the slightest crack in the center. From this section of the manor, he could see a staircase leading to the second floor. Paintings clung to the walls, but covered with thick dust and cobwebs, making it impossible to identify the works. A dust-covered candelabra stood on the landing of the stairway halfway leading up to the second floor. The skeleton continued to pace the floor from the kitchen to the common room, still reading through its book. Periodically, it would put the lantern down to turn the page. From Jordan's perspective, it really appeared the skeleton was engrossed in the book. In his adventures, the hunter had seen liches read from tomes to cast spells, but they at least had eyes within their skulls. This skeleton had absolutely no flesh to speak of, an absolute collection of bones held together by some dark magic. Could it be some kind of skeleton spirit hybrid? Perhaps it was reading through some kind of invisible eyes. The thought sent a chill up Jordan's spine. It would mean he'd be up against something he's never encountered before. Looking down at the axe in his hand, he began to wonder if the weapon would be of any use. Not all creatures are susceptible to the same core materials. Since the weapons have never felt him in the past, he felt confident the silver blades would still be effective, even against this creature that reads from books. Jordan decided he would check the rest of the area surrounding the manor before making his way inside. The last thing he wanted was additional combatants to deal with. Aside from the four dead he put down earlier, there were no other creatures stirring. However, the storm did make positive identification almost impossible. Taking his time to thoroughly examine the landscape, though, he felt confident there were no stragglers nearby. Making his way around the manor, the hunter found himself approaching a side door to the kitchen. It was missing much of its wooden paneling, giving him a chance to see the skeleton much closer than before. Remaining in as much of the shadows as possible, Jordan watched as his prey continued to pace back and forth. The faint sound of a voice pierced through the storm. He couldn't quite make out who was saying what, but it was definitely a male's voice coming from within the room. Panning his eyes as much as he could without being noticed, the hunter scanned the kitchen. The only figure was that of the skeleton. It has no throat. How could it speak? He thought 
Perhaps he could have been mistaken. Perhaps the voice was coming from deeper within the manor. As he sat and listened, Jordan was sure the voice was emanating from the kitchen. Was it some form of superior magic that gave this figure an invisible mouth to speak and nice to read? It was unlike anything he's experienced in the past. The skeleton had been walking in a specific pattern back and forth from the kitchen to the common room. The same number of steps, the same simple gait. Looking deeper into the common room, Jordan analyzed the scope of the interior. From his position, he could see a pair of, what appeared to be, short swords. They'd be hanging above the fireplace in a crossed arrangement next to the window he had peered into when he first approached the manor. A large shredded painting hung above the blades and partially askew from the rest of the wall. Although the dust was thick, the hunter could make out the faint silhouette of a large man in the painting. An iron poker protruded from the fireplace as if waiting for the lord of the manor to stoke burning coals. Off to the side, Jordan could see the first few steps of the staircase leading to the landing above. What appeared to be the remnants of a wooden gargoyle stood proudly on the banister. After holding his position for quite some time, the hunter decided it was time to take action. There were no apparent threats within the manor, save for the reading skeleton pacing back and forth across the floor. Although the collection of bones moved without the same hindrance or slowness of a corpse, it also appeared unarmed. The only things in its possession were the book and the lantern, though an oil-filled lantern could be quite the devastating weapon if thrown and broken. Still, Jordan was confident that this fight would be over rather quickly. He decided to strike the dark creature from behind, which would give him the element of surprise, especially considering the skeleton was focused more on the book than anything else in the room. As the skeleton continued its pace walking from the kitchen, the hunter kicked in the remnants of the door. Bits of wooden planks and splinters scattered across the floor, disturbing the accumulated dust. Jordan quickly entered the room, his axe raised and ready to throw.